Hello and welcome. Today, in many churches throughout the world, there's a particular focus on the Trinity, the Christian understanding that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we begin with a great hymn celebrating that truth. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, 
that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Bible reading is brought to us by Margaret Hollins, who we are very glad is now confirmed to serve alongside Helen Collins as our church warden for the next year. Today's reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our church Zoom quiz recently had a quiz question relating to the third man. That might have made some people think of Line of Duty, whose unmasking of the fourth man, their fourth seriously bent copper recently, made headlines for weeks, with fans of the previous series already knowing that the third man was one Chief Superintendent Derek Hilton. Might have made others think of the cricketing position mysteriously given that name neither quite fitted with the quiz's clue, which was about a third man who sadly had just died. I was convinced it must be referring to one of the English Cold War double agents, though without knowing whether the third was Philby, Burgess or Maclean. In fact, it turned out to be referring to Michael Collins, the American astronaut who was part of the Apollo 11 mission to the moon, but unlike Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, didn't actually himself get to land. And Trinity Sunday is there to remind us that as well as God the Father in heaven and Jesus God the Son, Christians believe in, well, I won't say a third man because that isn't quite the language that's used. Rather, we speak of the third person, the third member of the divine Trinity, the Holy Spirit. We heard earlier one of the set Church of England readings for the day, which speaks to us of the Spirit's presence, the Spirit's power, and the Spirit's assurance, while all the while pointing to the profound interconnectedness of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Spirit's presence, first of all, in the life of every true believer. Verse 9, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. Sometimes particular groups speak as if they are the only part of the church who is in possession of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps uh, suggesting that other Christians need to receive the Holy Spirit for the first time. These verses are crystal clear though that the Holy Spirit is present in the life of every true believer. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Notice in passing 
The connection between Christ and the Holy Spirit is so close that he can be called the Spirit of Christ. And believers, sometimes though they rarely speak of the Holy Spirit, can nonetheless very much celebrate what it means to have Christ dwelling within. Or, or some Christian groups may talk about having invited Christ into their lives and knowing the difference he makes. And it's clear from these verses that these are all different ways of talking about the same reality. Whatever language we use to express it, it's important to realize that the Christian is, being a Christian is not just about believing a set of truths or seeking to obey God's law, though it includes those elements. There's a personal, relational dimension to it as well. When you learn to drive a car, you're not just given a set of instructions and told to get on with it, nor are you allowed to do the training entirely on a computer. You can get a car sticker saying, caution, video games are my driving instructor, but that can't be wholly true. A real life instructor comes with you in the vehicle. And aren't all the other drivers on the road glad that that's the way it's done? And something similar is true for the Christian, and not just for the initial stage of our journey in faith either. By his Holy Spirit, Christ remains with us every step of the way. There's a medieval Irish prayer that's long been called St. Patrick's Breastplate, and which includes the lines, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ at my left, Christ at my right. And the way that happens, given that Christ himself is at the Father's right hand in heaven, is because of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, presence in the life of every true believer. Next, Romans 8 highlights the Spirit's power. Verse 13, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Throughout this chapter, the Christian's battle to follow God's way and to avoid falling into sin has been to the fore. The writer Paul speaking of the way of sin as the way of the flesh, the body sometimes. In our everyday speech, the sins of the flesh generally just refers to, to sexual transgression and unfaithfulness. It's clear from other parts of Paul's writing that though sexual sin is a significant component of what he means by that term, it's much broader. Galatians 5 makes clear the much wider range of transgressions that our fallen human nature can and does lead us into, listing sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. The language of putting to death the deeds of the body is very vivid. Most of us, thankfully, won't have direct experience of fighting in a war, but maybe we do have experience of, of tabing our garden, getting rid of the weeds that would spoil it, maybe using a spray or a flamethrower or, or a towel or a, or a trowel or a hoe. God's Holy Spirit living within us is pictured as like being given that kind of tool to put to death the inclinations of our fallen human nature, our flesh, that would otherwise mar our walk with God and our relationships with others. The Spirit's presence, the Spirit's power, lastly, the Spirit's assurance. Verse 15, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. It's a wonderful thing to know God as Father. The story is told of three expectant fathers in a Minneapolis hospital waiting room while their wives were in labour. The nurse tells the first, congratulations, you're the father of twins. What a coincidence, he replies, I work for the Minnesota Twins baseball team. The nurse returns and tells the second, you're the father of triplets. 
Wow, what a coincidence. I work for 3M Corporation. At this point, the third guy faints. When he comes to, the others ask what's wrong. I work for 7up, he replies. I'm aware that our human fathers may have been far from perfect. Some of us will be aware of our own shortcomings as parents. But I would guess we still have a sense of what fatherhood is supposed to be about. And so we can be truly comforted when, by his spirit, God assures us that we are his children and he is our heavenly father. And these verses again speak in passing of the relation between the members of the Trinity. For the Spirit can only assure us of our renewed relationship with God the Father because the Spirit himself is part of the Godhead. And the Holy Spirit, as we saw earlier, is the gift that's been given to every true Christian believer. Just occasionally, as I mentioned earlier, people would say they're Christians but almost completely ignorant or confused about the Holy Spirit's role in it all. And it may be that some realise as they reflect on a passage like this that even though you haven't spoken or thought much of the Holy Spirit, you do know these aspects of God's work in your life. His power at times enabling you to put to death the temptation to sin and the assurance that you are indeed adopted into God's family and he, that he is your heavenly father. And it's just a case of, of now understanding better how the Holy Spirit has long been at work enabling these things to happen. Others, as they're reminded of the way God can work, will be aware that we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to be as active in our lives as we should have done. And we need to pray for his Spirit to be working in us more fully and to allow him to do so. If you can't connect with any of these experiences, though, there is another possibility. Paul writes, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Maybe that means that for some who, though they've always called themselves a Christian because that's how they were brought up to see themselves, up to now, they've never really had a personal faith. The good news is that that realisation, difficult though it might be, need not have the last word. Indeed, for, for many, it's only in becoming aware that they're not true believers that they realise what they need to do to become one, to trust in the Son of God as Saviour, and to invite him by sending his Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to enable us to begin to battle self, to follow Jesus, and to know the Father's love as we are adopted into his family. Our next hymn is a prayer for these things to happen. O oh, breath of life, come sweeping through us. Revive your church with life and power. Sweet. 
church with a life and power. Let us pray. We begin with a prayer for racial justice. Dear God, who has made all people in your son's likeness and loves all whom you have made, suffer not the world to separate itself from you by building barriers braced on racial origin. As your son, our saviour, was born of a Hebrew mother, yet rejoiced in the faith of a Syrian woman and a Roman soldier, welcomed the Greeks who sought him and suffered an African to carry his cross. So teach us rightly to regard all believers as fellow heirs of your kingdom through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the prayers that follow, when I say mercy and grace, I invite you to respond, we plead before your throne in heaven. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Father of heaven, whose love profound a ransom for our souls has found, we pray for the world created by your love, for its nations and governments as they deal with all the major issues, global and national, and on top of that, have to steer their nations through the continuing pandemic. Extend to them your peace, pardoning love, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Almighty Son, incarnate word, our prophet, priest, redeemer, Lord, we pray for the church created for your glory for its ministry to reflect those works of yours as it proclaims your lordship and offers access to your saving love in Christ. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for families and individuals created in your image. For the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying, remembering especially Julie Stops and the bereaved family and friends of Paul Emery, Vida Langford and Jack Stewart, Mary Garner's brother. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them your mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Thrice holy, Father, Spirit, Son, mysterious Godhead, three in one. So we pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven, to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity, as we worship you, saying, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make us strong in faith and love. Defend us on every side and guide us in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all and those we care for today and evermore. Amen.